Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy, coming to you on Tuesdays, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate, home ownership, and community related. Well, today we are kicking off another new series, and we are going to be talking about everyone's favorite topic, insurance. <laughs> so joining me today is insurance expert, Sana Bag with Goosehead Insurance, and uh, welcome to the program, Sana. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's so nice to have you here. And you are, so you are a mortgage broker. So, right, you're a insurance broker, yep. mortgage broker. Yep. Oh, my head. Where <laughs> We're is all it? in the same world. It's a late <laughs> afternoon, but yes, it's it, for the same thing. <laughs> but you do not just homeowner's insurance, right? You do auto, you do flood insurance, you do, give yep. us the whole scoop on everything that you cover. Yeah, so I do home, auto, umbrella, flood. I do commercial as well, okay. RVs, motorcycles, so you name it. So I any it. any need that you might have insurance related except for medical, yes. then you're you're the person to contact if yep. you don't have somebody already, right? There you go. <laughs> All right, and, and you said, so Goosehead, Goosehead, you guys are a nationwide company, so if someone is, you know, has a relative or making a move outside of the state of Michigan, they can contact you and you can either help them or work with one of your partners in another part of the country as well, right? Yep. So I have partner yeah. agents in all states okay. and uh, right now I'm working uh, with a client in Missouri and Florida. Okay. So yeah, we do, uh, you know, insurance all over the nation and uh, happy to help anywhere. That's fantastic. And we're happy to have you here today and share your expertise. Um, like I said, we're kicking off a new series. So we actually have a four week series. We're going to be talking homeowners insurance some optional policies, investment properties. We're going to cover insurance and, and talk to you a little bit about what the insurance looks like for investment proper, properties. And then we're also going to talk about for auto insurance. We're not going to go in too much detail on auto because we try to stick to things a little bit closer to you know home and investment related. Um, but there were some changes with the auto policies a few years ago. And we just want to make sure that everybody has that information um, so that uh, you can make sure that you are covered. So, yeah. there you go. <laughs> so, so today we're going to talk homeowners insurance, um, and I think you were going to tell us there's really three key coverages, right, for homeowners insurance. So, so what are those key coverages? Yeah. So, um, the three key coverages. One is the dwelling coverage. So, okay. essentially, the dwelling coverage is coverage for the actual building, right? Okay. The, the actual, the actual home. physical structure. Yep, exactly. Okay. okay. Um, and so, you know, you have a set amount for each home okay. that's built up with um, what's called a replacement cost estimator. So that takes into account like the square footage of the home, you yep. know, if you have upgrades in the home, if your basement's finished, all of those elements go into coming up with the number you would have, the maximum amount you would have to replace the home. Okay. If there were to be a complete loss, like a fire or something. Okay, so all of those things go in. So, and, um, you know, so, yeah. So, like, if you've recently done updates to your home, like your kitchen, your bathrooms, you you want to make sure that those are factored in because if, um, you know, something were to happen, which we hope nothing does happen, but in the event that something were to happen to your home and it completely needed to be replaced, that whatever, you know, you put into the calculations, that's the maximum amount that you're going to get. Correct. To yep. replace your home. Exactly. And nowadays, okay. you'll see that the replacement costs are much higher than the actual value of the homes. Yeah. Which, you know, people seem to not understand because they're like, well, my house is worth 500 Why is my replacement cost 800000 Right. So the reason for that is because replacement, you know, the... Um, New materials. The, the materials yeah. are much more expensive. Yep. And also labor is very expensive. Right. So. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, it's really like if somebody, when they're home shopping, right, and they're comparing an existing home to a new construction, new construction is always more expensive than an existing home, right. always. And it is because you're paying present value for those materials and, like you said, the labor. And especially now, what we've seen in the last few years, those costs have really increased. So that's even, you know, new homes, you're going to pay significantly more. And that's basically what you're doing. If you lose your home, you're basically, I mean, you are building a new home. Right, exactly. So, so you have to make that apples to apples comparison. Yep, so. and you want to make sure you have the accurate amount of coverage for that. Right, because if you don't, then you're just not going to get 
replaced what you had before. Yeah, you know, they you could know. stop off at the roof and then you don't have a roof. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> you want a roof, especially in Michigan. Yep, so, exactly. So, okay, so that's so that's the first of three is the dwelling, and that's like your actual structure and then the replacement cost, um, which, which again, like, you know, if you have something, like you talk about the roof, right? Like we've had, we had some storms several years ago, and a lot of people had damage and issues to their roofs where, um, you know, they could get, the roof replaced. Right. So that's, what is that considered? Because that's all factored into that dwelling piece as well. Correct. So that would be a partial loss essentially, right? So they would come in, take a look at the loss. And so whatever the replacement cost would be for that. And again, you do have to make sure that your roof replacement is actually at replacement cost because that can be at a um, different um, level as well where it's depreciated coverage so you want to make sure okay your, your roof is protected at replacement costs as well yeah um but yeah that basically would be considered let's say the roof costs twenty thousand to replace you know that's part of the dwelling coverage and so it would be covered you know with as part of that okay all right so good to know so if you have any question as to what your coverage is this might be the time to check in on that yeah, right for sure <laughs> So what is the next item? What's another key coverage that that we should know about? So the next one is personal property. Okay. Um, that's essentially everything that you own, right? Like if you your take stuff. your home and flip it upside down, everything that falls out is your personal property. Yeah. Um, and so you want to make sure you have enough coverage. A lot of insurance companies on a home will just do a percentage of the um based on the dwelling, right? So it'll normally be 50% of the dwelling coverage. Okay. Okay. So you want to make sure, you know, looking at all the things that you own, that's enough coverage for you. Yeah. Um, So that's a big thing. And I think (laughs) most people would be very surprised how quickly, you know, that it adds up. So I, I would assume, I mean, you're the expert in this area, but I would assume most people don't have enough coverage when it comes to personal property <laughs> because you just don't realize how quickly the things add up. But yeah, but yeah I love your analogy of like flipping your house upside down. So <laughs> everything shakes <laughs> and out. Everything so. <laughs> shakes out. So does that also include, now what about appliances? Is that part of the dwelling or is that personal property? So that would be part of personal property Okay. Um, because it's not attached to the home itself. So, you know, it's going to fall out when we flip it. (laughs) Okay. So even though during a real estate transaction, many times that because we don't we don't transfer personal property per se. Right. In a real property transaction. Mm -hmm. But because, you know, kitchen appliances and washer and dryers, because those are part of the function of the home in a real estate transaction that can be considered part of the real estate transaction and is acceptable. No other personal property is acceptable like through a real estate transaction, especially we won't go into too much detail about that. That's another episode, but that is good to know because if you add up just what your kitchen appliances cost, right. You know, not including your clothing, your dishes, your, I mean, books, like, right. Furniture, everything, it adds up fast. Yeah. So So it has to impact it, you know, it has to be a peril that insurance covers. So easiest example is fire, right? You you lost everything. All of the appliances are gone. Um, Appliances are not covered for wear and tear. I know a lot of people reach out to me and they're like, hey, my refrigerator (laughs) stopped working. (laughs) Right? Yeah. (laughs) That would be really nice because a few years ago, my refrigerator stopped working and I had to have it all rebuilt because surprisingly it was actually less expensive to have the insides rebuilt rather than to replace it oh wow yeah but but in the event of a fire or tornado or something like that you don't have that option you have to replace so you want to make sure you have the coverage yeah so that's that is a great thing to to know and and like you said right it's there's no maintenance so even things like your hot water heater or something like that if your hot water heater happens to, you know, leak and like, cause this happened to me and your basement gets flooded because of it. Um, it's, it's not considered an act of God, right? So, um, because it's not sudden and not due to accident, yeah, accidental. Yeah. Accident, then it's, yeah, it's, it's not something that your, your coverage will yeah. We'll cover. So. so that's normally not covered, but yeah. there are some companies will provide water seepage coverage. It's an okay. endorsement, you know, optional coverage that you can add on. Okay. Um, and that will cover, you know, slow leaks from appliances. So oh. not every company offers that, sure. but you know, certain ones do but and it's a some. great coverage to have. 
Okay, so that's something to note for the optional coverages. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> so it's not necessary, but it's optional, and it might be a good option for yep. you. <laughs> there you go. So, okay, number three. So we had dwelling, personal property, and the third uh, key coverage is? Liability. Okay. So a big one, um, you know, think lawsuits, right? Yeah, um, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather not think lawsuits, but, you know. We have a lot of lawyer yeah. billboards around, yeah. <laughs> around the Metro Detroit area. Yeah. But essentially, you know, this is in case of a slip and fall on your property. Yep. Um, so liability also does travel with you. So, okay. you know, anywhere in the nation or um, across the world. Okay. Essentially. So if you, for example, accidentally trip someone on vacation. Um, and they sue you, you know, you, yeah. could, it could potentially be covered on your homeowner's policy okay. or your kids, you know, at school and they're, they damage someone's iPhone, which is worth like over what? Oh my gosh. Grand. <laughs> yeah. That's cr- Isn't that crazy? It has to be accidental. They cannot yeah. throw it across the room. <laughs> they can't throw it and then get it covered. But if something right. were to accidentally happen yeah. or, or they happen to have it in their back pop, what if they have it in their back pocket? You know, go to use the restroom and it falls. <laughs> that that could be up for debate. Maybe I won't put you on the spot with answering that question. But it's... well, it's all about lawsuits, right? So yeah. essentially, another individual has to sue you or a family member within the household. Oh, okay, and that's where okay. liability will come in. Okay, yep. so so just if when there's a lawsuit involved, which hopefully something doesn't get to that point, but it is yep. a good thing to keep in mind because when you're selling your home. Um, especially during the winter, I always tell my sellers, you need to make sure, you know, if you're going to have a showing that your walkway, your driveway, that those things are clear and salted because while yes, your home is on the market, those people are coming to your home and your property and you are liable. You have to make it safe for them to come and enter. Right. So that's, that's something you want to make sure and you have insurance, but let's, yeah. let's, let's You'll try always, not to use that. <laughs> right. And so there's different levels of liability. A lot of times when I see policies that are in force, mm-hmm. you know, the coverages are very low. So the starting point is 100000 which is very low. And then it goes up to 500000 And you can go beyond that, too. But, um, you know, you want to be at that 500000 marker just because it includes um, lawyer fees as well as the settlement. So, you okay. know, that gets eaten up very quickly when you have a lawsuit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. So so those are the, th- the three key coverages, the dwelling, personal property, and liability. Now, there's a couple of optional coverages. What are those? So a couple of optional coverages that I always recommend. One is water backup. Okay. So that relates to, in Michigan, you know, we have a lot of homes that get the backup from sump pumps mm-hmm. uh, in the basements. Right. So, Especially this spring. We've had some days yeah. with a lot of, I mean, we had nothing for so long and then so much. So yep, exactly. yeah. So if you hear your sump pump running a lot, right? then it, it, that's probably a yeah, good thing. Yeah. Or if you go on vacation and, you know, the lights go out and you don't have backup sump pump, you know, that, that can obviously cause some damage. So yeah. in that case, you actually, the homeowner's policy, the core coverages don't cover that. So you do have okay. to have this endorsement of water backup where, you know, you can have varying levels that, that you want, but essentially covers replacement of, let's say your bis- basement is finished, so it'll, you know, cover the actual, um, like, drywall or flooring that needs to be replaced, also um, the personal property down there. So that's, okay. a, you know, part of this coverage is the personal property that is in your basement, essentially. Okay. <clears throat> so, so if you have yeah. furniture or anything down there, you know, that would be covered under this coverage and not your personal property coverage. Okay. So, yeah, there's a lot of people that have finished basements and, you know, it's kind of like a hangout for many kids and teens and um, or even adults, you know, you have your yeah. workout rooms and things. So, yeah, that's definitely something that you want to yeah. make sure is covered in the event that, like you said, the power yeah. goes out, you're on vacation, you know, or middle of the night even, your sun pump stops, right. stops working and you don't even realize it. Yeah, I've so. had this happen to me twice already. So. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so. <laughs> It's no fun. Uh, I, I've yep. had I've had water in my basement as well. It's not it's not fun. <laughs> yep, yep. And also it covers so you know people who don't have basements. Um, yeah. you know they'll always say, well, I don't need it because I don't have a basement. Yeah. But this coverage is also for drain backups. So okay. let's say like the sewer backs up into your or the toilet clogs and backs up into the home. That's protection for that as well. Oh, okay. Not that's part good to of. Know. The regular homeowners insurance. Okay, so is it not part of your regulars ho- regular yeah. homeowners insurance just because it's just not part of it, but because you have this 
water backup policy or addition to your policy, then it is covered. Correct. Yeah. Okay. You would have to have this optional coverage as part of your policy in order to be covered. For in that. order for it to be covered. Okay. So, so the personal property in your finished basement is is only covered um, under this optional coverage if it's water related. Correct. Yep. Okay. If it's related to the backup of the sump pump or drain backup or anything like that, it then it's it will be covered under this okay. coverage. Yep. All right. That's great to know. Any other any other optional coverages that we should know about? Yep. So the second okay. one I always recommend is um, service line coverage. So okay. service line is essentially you have you know utility lines running underneath your home. Yep. <clears throat> up to the city line, right? So you got the sewer, you got water, um, gas, electric, all of that, as well as your internet line. So if there were to be some sort of issue, like for example, you know, trees, the older trees have roots that can cause yes. some damage with yeah. these um, lines. And so if that is the case, you as the owner are liable for getting that replaced. And so, you know, this will cover the cost to repair the excavation as well as the landscaping, essentially. Okay. So it is an optional coverage. It doesn't cost a lot of money okay. normally. So just yeah. something that I always recommend to my homeowners, especially first time home buyers. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I th- feel like that's not one that we hear about very often. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. everyone's trying to save money. So they, they, yeah. <laughs> Where can we make the cuts? Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, Especially now with the replacement costs so high. It's like, yes. but I just want my house, right? <laughs> like, I want my house back. So. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So the water backup and the, the, the security lines, service, line, service yep. lines. Okay. Anything else that, that we should know about or? Those are the key Those are ones. Key... I mean, there's so many other ones, yeah. obviously, but, you know, reach out to your uh, agent or you know they're welcome to contact you if they don't have an agent yeah. or they want more information you're, you're happy to help happy to help so, educate yep okay that's fantastic and then the next episode we are going to talk a little more about some optional policies yeah. so we're going to get into those in a little more detail we'll be talking flood and umbrella policies yeah. so if you've uh, been wondering about those, you're going to want to tune in to next week for the next the next episode. So, um, well, hopefully you found this informational. Um, again, just to kind of to recap today for homeowners insurance, there's three key coverages, the dwelling, personal property, and liability. And then there also are optional coverages with the water backup and the service lines. So if you need more information, contact Sana or your, your local insurance rep and um, make sure that you're covered for what you need. There you go. Thank you, Tracy. (laughs) So thanks for joining us today. Thank you all for tuning in. And we'll see you next week where we continue our talk on insurance. Have a great day.